Welcome back to the Unicus Radio Hour. I'm your Jedi host, Robert Stanley, broadcasting live from Palm Springs, California, on the greatest alternative talk radio station on the planet, KGRA. And you already knew that. In case you just happen to be tuning in, thank you so much. This is the second hour, and you know what that means. <laughs> the lines are open. The lines are open. If you have any questions or comments, <clears throat> or if you could help me with my voice, I'd appreciate it. The number here is 85KGRA Live. There's no way you can forget that, right? 85KGRA Live. And if you don't want to do that, actually comes out in just numerically. It's 855-472-5483. Please write that down if you don't already have it. 855-472-5483. Producer Bill Skywatcher will answer your call, put you on hold, and then I'll bring you into the show. Any questions or comments are welcome. You can also, if you're in the chat at KGRA, you can definitely... Um, Put something up there. We'll see it in the chat. Or you can email me at editor at unicusmagazine.com, although I don't always check my email during the show. So it's probably best if you call. We will definitely look forward to hearing from you. 855-472-5483. Correct. Thank you, Alan. So... um, how much longer are what what is the ultimate goal of the project you're working on simulation well one of the awesome things about it is that now that we don't have to go through the the gatekeepers these like mainstream media gatekeepers now we can disseminate ideas uh as long as you formulate them really well, because there's so much noise, so at least formulate the ideas really well. And then you can disseminate mm-hmm. some people from around the world right now, from all different countries around the world are pinging us. Right. And they're like, they're commenting and they're saying, oh my gosh, this changed my life. Or I, I started building a community around the subject in my area. And so I'm like, damn, that's what's up. So if we can inspire people from around the world to think more critically about the ultimate nature of reality and what their North Star is and all this type of stuff through these interviews, that's a big one. And then also, so um, another one is that, you know, it's kind of it's kind of ridiculous that like isn't one of the most r- interesting things about life when we're born is that there's no like there's no canon. There's no uh, operating system. There's no manual. And so that whole notion that we were talking about where the child's born into the world, they have to remember that they come from source, that they have to find out what their North Star is, right, and go and pursue it and surround themselves with good mentors and, and people to help them get there and stuff like that. You know, that – why is there so, – so I'm working on a big synthesis that I think can be really relatable as like a canon for people. So have a really good compression algorithm for the most profound knowledge on the planet. Um, so I'm working on that and then um, – Oh, and then also, like, it's kind of ridiculous that, you know, why is it that 50,000 people can fill sports stadiums, but 50,000 people can't fill a stadium to talk about the direction of civilization? It's it's kind of it's it's funny because we're it's we're exactly in the game we're supposed to be in where the sports teams are empty 90 percent of the time. There is 20 two uh, players in like football pads that are, you know, crashing into each other. Um, you know <laughs> what I mean? And, and stuff like that. And 50,000 yeah. people are, you know, tribally roaring at them. But if you make a panel with different leaders in a specific uh, field about the trajectory of our planet, you'll get, you know, a thousand people or, or like sometimes you get crickets. And so it's, and so we're, we're, we're trying to um, fill sports stadiums with curious intellectuals, um, curious spirits for full day, multidisciplinary events, everything from meditations to comedy skits to, you know, those game shows you were talking about all the way to um, fireside chats, all these types of things. Oh yeah. yeah. So that's another part of the vision, creative warehouses. There's so many interesting aspects of it. We'll see where it ends up going. Wow. I hadn't thought of that, but it sounds good. That sounds actually like a really great activity that we could engage in as far as helping to unite people. Yeah. Okay. So anyway, um, do we have a question? Yeah, the signal's kind or of, if we don't have, I, I have one more story to share if we, if we don't have a question. Okay, sure. Um, go ahead. Robert, you'll, I think you'll enjoy this story, but you know, one of my friends, um, Tom Osborne, um, grew up in a village in Kenya and when he's growing up there, it's, you know, imagine a village in Kenya, there's not no running water, no electricity, these types of things. And he 
in eighth grade realized that this was a bifurcating moment of his life when he was taking a test because if he took the did the test really well he got into the boarding uh-huh. school in nairobi in kenya and so he ended up taking the test while taking his okay. county seat in the boarding school in nairobi and he got electricity running water computers uh, alumni network of leaders of the country in kenya right next thing he knows after he graduates uh-huh. high school he's going to harvard in cambridge and so wow. and so wow. his life wow. trajectory went from a village in kenya to harvard um, from just these bifurcating moments of life. And so now he goes back to the village and he, he, it's so hard to relate, you know, s- you, you know, spiritually um, at that point. Uh, and and, oh, and yeah. also that um, another aspect of it is like uh, it, with that, like being in the village, like you're totally cool with just being like, I'll just sit in a lawn chair in the village um, or on a rock and just be for hours, just be here in the Western world, if you're not fucking productive with your time, oh my God, you're falling behind in the hierarchy. You can't just be. And so we're trying yeah. to also transform people's consciousness with holding space with one of my friends, Ori Shapira, and things like that. So just holding space for just being huh. and transforming consciousness is also a very California thing, trying to get that back. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, uh, I know, I know. Yeah, it's weird. It's weird being back here. Um, since you brought that up about Kenya, I did meet somebody exactly like that some years ago. Um, my son had to have surgery. The um, I was I was very concerned about making sure he got the best care naturally because surgery is there's no such thing as minor surgery, uh, in my opinion. And this wasn't minor surgery anyway, so I was really panicky about getting a specialist that ha- with a proven track record. Okay. And I was referred to a guy named Dr. Okoreki. And his whole family was from Kenya. Uh, I'm not sure if he was born there, but he he had all the benefits of all the medical schooling here in the U.S. He, was, he, he ran teams of people to run these, um, to operate these da Vinci machines, you know, the, the robotic arms that yep. do stuff and, you know, invasive, but it's, but it's really precision. Yes. But you have to be a good operator. Because you screw up and the machine will screw you up. So, right? This guy. And the other thing about him was, I don't know what, there, it was probably a skin condition, but even though he was, he was African, there was large parts of his skin that were white. <laughs> you know? Mm-hmm. So, the, just, the, just the visual. Like, I, I, I did, had no idea who he was. I was talking on the phone, but he was so so calm and and, and very precise you know like uh, he gave me everything in context like you know all the information that i needed he was giving it to me very calmly and just saying you know he's going to be fine here's what we can do for him just bring him in transfer him to the hospital and i'll run the team and all this stuff i'm like okay cool then i meet the guy and he walks in i'm like whoa. Oh, visually i'm like whoa well that's weird and then he's and then he's, you know hi i'm dr okoreki people think i'm irish you know my name is i'm actually from kenya and, and he's telling me all this stuff and i like I'm, I'm still kind of in shock that oh wait a minute my son needs surgery, and I, you know, I want the best guy, and you're the best guy. And like, I'm what I'm thinking about. I'm like flashing on this because this is when Obama was in office, and I'm thinking, now here's a guy that loves loves this country because it's given him all these opportunities, and he's actually using that. He's paying it forward by by using his skill, the the skills that he's developed, to ha- to help other people save other people's lives. Yeah. Instead of just telling people how to live their lives, he's giving them opportunity to continue living their lives in a healthy manner. And I was just like floored by this guy. I didn't ask him about his politics because that meant nothing to me. But I was just looking at him thinking, well, th- th- uh, that's, that's t- the American dream. Th- his family came here from Kenya. I'm sure it wasn't like, you know, like you said, it's not terribly advanced. Not that it, there's these kind of people, these potentialities are everywhere. For everybody, and that, that's the, that's what I want to see more of happening. And it's not an American thing, per se. Um, it, it, although, look, we've had. I feel, and I know this this upsets people, but I really think that the Constitution and the Bill of Rights was um, a gift that, that by benevolent beings. Just it not, and they didn't write it. Just subtly suggested some things to the key people, like, hey, you know, it'd be a good idea. Mm-hmm. You know, free and, speech, and that yeah. is yeah. 
yeah, but that would be a good idea. Yeah. You know, of course, that was a that those 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 are. Um, I think that came after the fact. The first thing you had to people. get the Constitution. Yeah. Well, that's what the that's the that Constitution, because it has its negative liberties. For for anybody who doesn't know what that means, it, there's a list of negative liberties in there, which protects us from tyranny in the government. Because the the founders knew that's human nature. Power corrupts, and absolute power corrupts absolutely. Absolutely. So the the more these these people rise up in society and have these roles where they're basically you know in charge of everything, they're going to be somehow somewhere they're going to abuse it, and that's what the Constitution is written is is to constrain the government from basically you know. So, I, I that's that of all the places I've been to, I've been to fifty nine countries so far. All the places I've been to, I mean, I love other countries, but there's something something very unique and special about the United States of America and specifically the Constitution. Yeah, absolutely agreed. And there is also something very spe- special about the Magna Carta, too. And there's also some... Oh, yeah, that started, that started it. it. And and it's, it's almost as though when you're born with so many um, privileges that you forget that people worked really <laughs> freaking hard to try and um, put these things together and that it's really important yeah. to remember them. So to be a really um, a vigilant student of history um, and care about that a lot and also to realize that it's not over, that there's still new amendments no. that need to be made. There's still new ways for us to update the code of our world to, 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 to deploy an update that maximizes more prosperity. And so... Um, those are both key there is to realize how far a hundred billion humans built civilization before us and also that we have to make sure the seventh generation principle moving forward of the indigenous Mm. that please be very very considerate about seven generations forward about every action that we take Uh, yeah any yeah one of the questions i don't know if you're aware of this but no question no caller no there's a (laughs) What's, yeah. <laughs> don't worry about it. Okay. Don't take it personal. That's a, this is the thing. This particular style. If I don't ask, if we don't ask the right questions, people do not respond to that because we're having a conversation. It doesn't feel like there's a lot of room. If we were just, hey, look, if we wanted to do something polarizing and throw out some really, you know, leading questions, I'm sure people would respond just to just to say, yeah, I, I don't like that, or oh yeah, I'm on board. It's like, but we're having this exchange here. Nuanced. It's totally yeah. genuine. Yeah. Very. Yeah, it's spontaneous. It's not like yeah. planned. And yeah, it's it doesn't leave a lot of room for people to jump in. I mean, I've even had people like Richard Hoagland on here, and he's a fascinating guest. And we, but the thing is, because we're just because it is just a conversation instead of like a topic driven thing, yeah. like whatever immigration or something, yeah, yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but but you okay? You were talking about the global economy. Uh, oh. The latest numbers are it's like over two hundred and forty trillion dollars worth of debt worldwide. So the whole, the system's broken. Okay, most people don't want to talk about it, but it's been in the news a few times. And I look at that number and I think, well, actually, I think this, it was it's more. There's more debt than there is equity. Well, how did that happen? And then more importantly, how the heck do we fix that? Jubilee? Do we get a jubilee? Can we reset? I mean, come on, what the heck? <laughs> It's uh, nuts. I mean, really, it's it's it, it, it can't we can't keep going like this, especially in the United States, the way they keep just voting in, uh, deeper. They what are they what do they call that? Uh, the debt ceiling. They just keep raising the debt ceiling, which is not raising anything. It's digging a deeper ditch for us financially and otherwise. And, and the only way we stay afloat is what through our military. Can, can we also acknowledge how? Th- and this is, I think, such a key component for those that. Uh, are thinking about things in, from that lens is that when you go back to the origins of these this of this type of thinking, it, mm-hmm. the origin the origin of this type of thinking really came from the first time that someone came up to someone else and said, "Who owns this land?" <laughs> and the other one's like, no one owns this land. This is land that just we grow food on, or we and we enjoy, we live under, etc. And then yeah. the idea is that, oh wow, this cave has 
uh, it's a bigger cave. This cave has more light in it or this cave has more things for me to do in it or food in it or whatever it is. And these these little incremental instances in our evolution, as best as we hypothesize, were the reasons that we were just bop beating each other over the head with violence for each other's land, for each other's um, resources. And the in the the invention of an exchange like a like a currency is a yeah. it's a it's in so many ways um useful in many ways um and at, and yeah. it's also like are we really that uh we're just so in our own egos and ruts about this one way of exchanging value that we haven't realized other ways of exchanging value beyond currency because right now these markers for well-being being something like gdp is totally not yeah, right. uh, not not it I, we were just giving the example of, of holding space or just being right if i'm just being with yeah. nature if i'm just being and enjoying my my life i'm 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 actually uh, not valued whatsoever by by but i'm but i'm actually very calmly enjoying nature i might have a deep open heart i might be yeah more spiritually connecting so it's like than if i was being stuck in the economic machinery doing something i don't love so yeah 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 well that's what i actually when i was in hong kong i picked up a job working in social compliance which is when an auditor goes to a factory mm. They're looking for a lot of different things, but but something has changed. I don't know exactly when this started, but they look for any kind of violations of the workers and the environment. That's what social. That's why I call it social compliance. It's not just uh, specific legal stuff. It uh, you know like permits and stuff. It's it's about um, protecting the planet and the people that work in these factories, which is it's gotten better. Um, and, but there, of course, there's there are violations, and the reason that the companies, especially in America, the corporations, when they hire these, they subcontract these factories, is they don't want the liability, you know. So, like Apple, they had a problem with their some of the the uh, Foxconn was one of the, is one of the biggest yeah. uh, factories in China, and there was people jumping out the windows and killing themselves because they were just so distraught by the conditions there, because uh, we people are not machines, yeah. you know, yeah. right. And it's, those those jobs really should have been automated a long time ago, because there's other things we can do with our time. And it's I've actually in the, that's in the Ami book. A lot of people, including myself, were very concerned about, you know, how much stuff is going to be automated, how many people are going to be displaced from their jobs. Um, but it's if there if we move to a more equitable, divine sort of brotherhood or fellowship based, not even an economy, it's just like you said, a a, a way of life then um, automation will take over a lot of the, just the drudgery, the, you know, the, the repetitive work, which kind of drives humans crazy. Uh, and so if you have advanced machinery and you, you program it so that it is doing something that's beneficial for everybody, including the planet, then that's a good thing. But if you program it to be like, you know, a better soldier or weapon system, I mean, that's, that's, in, that's you know, everybody's going to suffer from something like that. Unfortunately. So anyway, I do think that, um, and we're not talking about guaranteed income. That's the other thing is a fallacy. That's not, that's not it. It's a, it's about inclusive everybody sharing everything. Inclusive stakeholding. Yeah. Is a well, really I, okay. Good way to so let's, it. let's use the, the, the forbid, the forbid, forbidden word here is communism. Or just, or just, just it's never just been inclusive stakeholding. I know I should say, okay, go ahead, go ahead and play on that. But just like, the, just, yeah, in, it's just such an easy way of understanding it. I know that's is, a, is that, like you, you already use these yeah. platforms so much and for, and for like just using a ride sharing service, like an Uber or a Lyft that you that right. you, why why is it just the initial investors and employees and founders are the ones and even the employees that come in later are the ones that get anything the shareholders when really the drivers themselves plus the passengers that take all the rides are the ones that build all, so much of the value so to tokenize that and to give people inclusive stakeholding and also the headquarters of these companies is literally in the downtown 
San Francisco area that they themselves can become inclusive stakeholders in the damn communities there as well and support mm. it that way. So that that mentality, I think, is um, and and yeah, and go yeah, go 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 ahead and yeah, take it where where you want to go. <laughs> well, yeah, I don't like that word either because it's been. People say that we've already had communist countries, but I disagree. It's never really been fully implemented to, to the full extent in the sense that there is everything is a collective, as you said, then everything is shared because everybody would know and act as though we're all family. You know, when you're in a family, you share stuff and you don't say, hey, you need to pay me or whatever like that. It's just like there's in other words, the the level of competition has to decrease gradually until the because the level of cooperation and or collaboration increases and that's where we're really all going to win everybody so that's that's really the only reason i bring that up because though that's a very loaded term and i know a lot of people say they are communists socialists whatever which but I, i'm not sure they even understand what that is and ultimately um you, the Soviet Union was never yeah. really or communist. Or the hundred million people it, it that have died <laughs> trying to make it happen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In China, the, yeah, and other things like that. That's not that's not true com- around the world. Yeah, it's not time. A communal. It's yeah. not communal living, not at all. So anyway, I'm just I'm just bringing it up because I know that's a. Uh, okay, so here's a loaded question, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> that you guys can participate into. What I'd like to know, really seriously, I'd like to know. First of all, are you reading the Ami books? If so, what's your opinion of them? And more importantly, though, what do you do to increase the amount of love in your heart? That's a pretty simple question. I know you can answer it. I'd, I, I know I'd like to hear from you. I, I think Alan would Likewise, too, and yeah. I'm sure. Yeah, it would be it would be very helpful. Yeah, if you. If you can answer that question, <laughs> I will send you a gift. How about that? All right. We'll get your number, uh, your address off the air. Producer Bill will get that. If you would be so kind as to call in with answer that question, please. What are you doing to increase the love in your heart your, on a daily your basis? Your love quotient on a daily basis. Your love basis. quotient. Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so the phone number 855 472 5483. One more time, 855. 855- Four seven two, five four eight three. Yeah, you know it was called. Um, so we have int- IQ, the intelligent quotient. Then there was they came up with the counterpart to that EQ. was the emotion. Emotional intelligence yeah. is actually what they called yeah. it. But but I think they missed the mark there. The love quotient is a yeah. lot more accurate. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> they, they, because just it's such a random thing. Oh, he's so emotional. You know, give him a higher score. What what does that mean? You know, what is it? More empathy? Okay, that's uh, I, I'm on board with empathy, but yeah. Anyway, other anyway, aspects to that um, are like emotion regulation. Uh, you can regulate your emotions. Mm. Um, another aspect to that is perspective taking. You can more easily get behind the eyes of another person. Um, mm-hmm. There's a lot of aspects to EQ that are really, really strong. But yeah, LQ, the love quotient. Yeah, yeah. How deeply can you tap into all that is? Sometimes we say we have one foot in the physical world and we have one foot in the in the melting into all that is, into spirit or source. And that is beautiful to be able to balance those two. Well, yeah. And that's, okay, one of my grandfathers, very spiritual guy, um, he told me that balance is always found between two extremes. And that stuck with me because, I mean, it's first of all, it's true. It's a very, it's an accurate, I should say, it's an accurate mm-hmm. statement because it's observable to be true. And the, the hard part, though, is knowing that as it's happening to you, yeah. so you don't want to be, I think Buddha said something about um, not too tight, not too loose, mm-hmm. you know. And and in in order to be in tune with creation, yeah, that's a great way to put because it. Because it's it's an ebb and flow all the time. Mm-hmm. So I I don't know. I I'm really excited. I I know I'm an optimist, but it's like <laughs> I can give you the <laughs> some days I, are more difficult than others. I can give others. you the examples. The too tight. The Go too ahead. tight are the ones that are in the financial industry in the suits uh, going around and and exchanging yeah. all the numbers and banking and self dealing and also too tight are the the self-dealing politicians and physicians and food industries and all this type of stuff, media companies. But then the too loose as well in many ways are the ones that are on the 
they call them now cosmic voyages. It's like sometimes I'm in a I'm I'm like going somewhere with people and I'm like, you know, I got a show the next day. Like I got to get back and they're just like yeah. surrender to wherever the wind takes them next. And I'm just like I'm just like <laughs> oh I'm like okay, that's cool. Like you can do that, but like you can be a little tight and a little loose too. Yeah, that was a great way to put it. <laughs> yeah. All right. So we have a caller, right, Alan. Hang on. Hey, Ronald, you're on the air. Thanks for calling in. Hi, this is, this is Ronald from Minnesota. How you doing, Robert? Thank I'm you. doing good. Yeah, Hi, Ronald. Our guest tonight is Alan. Hi, Ronald. Thanks for and, coming on. Yeah, Alan. <laughs> <laughs> Um, interesting. You're you're talking about finding your your north. No, when you said north star, you mean the north star, or do you mean like is there a north star or a different star? Yeah, yeah. The north star for every human, if for every child that's born into the world, is their own beautiful creative potential that they can achieve in the world. Their own paint stroke of genius that they can bring to the bring to our world. That's good. Yeah, and um, I think what the question you had is what do i do yes to... increase your love yeah in your uh, heart I, uh, what i do is i share my best gift which is uh hopefully uh, good vibrations to people around me either on the internet or in in real life you know when i'm out and about in town and i like you said you smile to somebody and somebody's gonna smile back you know yeah <laughs> Yeah. In most cases, people are going to smile back, you know. And so, um, I, I think uh, if you if you give out that positive vibration, you will get it back. Maybe not, not right away. Maybe not the first time you try it, but in, in turn, it will come back, you know. And but you have to give it in order to get it. So uh, you have to you have to share the good vibration in order to receive it. Good, good vibration. I, yeah. So, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. That, that's what I'm getting from your lesson. <laughs> uh, okay. I love it, Ronald. Yeah, well, th thank yeah. you for sharing that. I love it. I love it. So happy to All right, thank you. All right, All take right. care. We'll see. talk to you soon. Thank talk you. you. Thanks, time. Ronald. Bye. Keep right. spreading that. Thanks. Keep spreading that. Anyway, the simulation project, or what is it? It's just the... How many people have you interviewed so far? Over 500 people, yeah. Five, God, five, I saw that on your page. Yeah, I'm like, come on, yeah, really? 500 people <laughs> in a year and a half, too. It's been crazy. Yeah, oh, yeah. Man. I'm just... Uh, there's so many smart people in so many different fields, and so I'm trying yeah. to share what they're building and how they got there and why it's important with as many people as possible, as fast as possible. And so there's just so many smart people to feature. Actually, Robert, you know what's really cool is also going <laughs> on the road to different um countries oh, yeah. and so we have an invitation right now from peking university in beijing to go and interview their professors and leadership and so we're going to do that in september and i'm just i'm wow. so jacked because like that's how we bring the fucking world together that's how we do yeah. it all of a sudden simulation has a bunch of interviews from peking university or from buenos aires or from wherever in the world and you're seeing yeah. that that we are all love we are all want peace and dignity we all have our yeah families and and our goals in life and stuff so these are those tiny little things that i think that we can do to um bridge the culture close together i for the longest time have been wanting to bring the united states and china closer together to ensure maximal prosperity moving forward into the future so i'm really looking forward to to that and another really important one is silicon valley and los angeles um to bring to yeah. bring them together um on the media and hollywood also with the tech and science that's happening up here so bringing those two together is really important um there's a lot of these actually you gave the quote balance is found between two extremes and so like yeah 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 yeah, yeah. well ask ask and maybe you should one of your questions is is you can add to your list of amazing questions is uh you know so what are you doing professor to increase the love quotient i love <laughs> right. i highlighted and bolded and underscored love quotient and i changed it to a different oh, color. Okay. i mean I, i'm gonna turn that into a question i'm gonna right now i'm, I'm actually yeah. gonna go make it size like 36 in my notes because i'm gonna remember that <laughs> you know that's i love that lq baby love quotient that's so good yeah yeah yeah, the, uh, the what is your LQ? 
I can't date you if you've got a low elk. (laughs) (laughs) I just don't hang with elk. Those low elk you people, people. man. (laughs) You know, actually, I see them on television all the time. Cool thought is, you know, if you imagine a hierarchy of of people, or actually, it's a bell, it's a bell curve of like IQ, right? And the middle, yeah, yeah, this is the tail ends of the distribution. I wonder where those two bell curves with LQ. I wonder how they overlap. Like maybe someone that has really high iq is actually maybe more in the middle Mm. and someone with really high lq could be maybe you know in the middle or lower end or whatever so that they don't necessarily they're not necessarily um come together um lq and iq and eq but they likely do come together if you find yourself further on the bell curve you're probably um also quite able to abstractly reason a ton of different variables and compute them uh, which is in many ways IQ and same thing with EQ and LQ are similar in some ways too. Yeah, but I don't think it's been written. I know there's an emotional intelligence question metric. Mm. I don't I don't know. I, I guess that could be applied or tweaked a bit so that we could get to this. I don't know. I mean, it's not really that. It's not, it doesn't require a science, a rocket scientist to to, to figure that out. There, but I, there probably needs to be some kind of scale. So if anybody out there is interested in putting that together, that little metric of the love quotient, because uh, I think it's pretty easy to test. Obviously, people could lie about it. I don't know why they would, but I, I you know, we, I don't know. I just remember taking the IQ test when I was younger. And thinking, man, this is a waste of time. I don't, I don't know why. There's I'm doing, something doing interesting. This. There's, two, let me play on two things. Their first thing is on the IQ side. There is something really interesting about being able to basically, you're able to abstractly hold a bunch of different variables in your working memory and run a computation in your head. And okay. so that's a big aspect of IQ. And then on an LQ measurement, I think what you mentioned earlier about consonants is a big one you can literally do fmri or eeg and you can map someone's level of consonants and what is that it's doing things like seeing the symmetry in their in the state of what's going on and with their brain activity or similarly with their heart there's all this new oh. stuff with like heart math that's happening um oh yeah right 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 they, uh, yeah heart math institute yes and they right the energy field around your heart oh, okay Okay. Well, that's because it was mentioned in the books, the Ami books. They had, actually had a device that could measure the level of your that's yeah, it. your I love, love it. quotient. Yeah, they didn't say quote quotient, but I'm just using I I I don't know. I'm I like playing with words, so I thought that was actually a good uh, sort of branding. You know, something that people can digest that that the the concept. All right, and actually in our world, I know people are going to start using it and. Um, yeah. Probably like competing, competing. But if you're competing on on something that's that's beautiful like that, in, in a very peaceful, loving way, you know, it's like, hey, yes, I really increased. Yes. It. Look at, look at, I got, look how high I got my love quotient. Yeah. You know, <laughs> like, yeah. Wow, how'd you do that, bro? Yeah, I mean, yeah. Like, <laughs> and, and you can joke around and be like, yo, bro, I'm so much more non-dual than you are right now, you know, or whatever, <laughs> you know. <laughs> <laughs> I, we had that joke on the show. It's so good. Shout out Samantha Stein. I think said that one. But here's another. Here's yeah. another one. Is um, you can do a, you can do a like a kind of like a friendly way of just kind of like you're basically poking at someone and you're just saying like if they look maybe like a little stressed and stuff, you can say, hey, how's your love quotient right now? And then they may like kind of snap mm-hmm. a little out of their stress state and they're like. <sighs> Thank you for helping me with that moment. You know, sometimes just asking a person, yeah. Sometimes just asking them, how I I, I can see you're struggling. I say, is there anything I can do to help? Yeah, you know, or like you said, or just how are you feeling are you right feeling? now? It's like yeah. showing some empathy. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. It definitely it it kind of snaps people out of that dissonant yeah. patterning. Genuine love. In a very loving way. Genuine, yeah. Gently, genuine yes. gentle. Eye contact is huge. Really staying present with the eyes. Mm-hmm. And and, yeah. and also, z- after you ask the question, how are you feeling? Just <laughs> zip. Hey, and let me tell you something. When I was younger and I was working on a lot of 
you call spiritual metaphysical stuff. I did. I was doing these thought experiments, and one of them was about telepathy, just to see how people would react, and it, or if it, if if they could even because I I already knew telepathy was real. Some of the extraterrestrials were showing me that they actually not only could send stuff, but they were receiving for sure. They were like reading my thoughts, and they were demonstrating the fact that they were doing that. Okay. Which at first was shocking, but ultimately I got over it and just realized, okay, well maybe that's a good thing, or at least I gotta I gotta figure a way to make a positive something positive out of it. But anyway, I saw like I'm I'm walking around in, in the city, and I'll look at a person and like mentally smile at them and say, "Hi, how you doing?" You know, and they, <laughs> it didn't happen all the time, but it was weird because this person be walking down the street, you know, kind of robotic. And then they'd suddenly look over at me, you know? I mean, for no freaking reason other than the fact that I was broadcasting to them this thing, you know? And and I like it 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 really freaked me out at first. I was like, uh oh. Well, I don't want to abuse that, you know, and I don't want to invade people's minds, obviously. Addition out Clearly, that LQ. That's not this. But uh, it, but it was see the thing was I was just kind of testing the yeah. waters. I was still putting my toe in the water just to see if it's for is this real? And if so, um, wh- n- now what? You know, I mean, I, I look. I think you're right. We have vocal cords for a reason, but there's something much deeper. So there's a much, um, a greater level of clarity <laughs> when you we um, communicate through telepathy. It's not just words. It's it's visuals. There's an emotion that comes with it, um, and sometimes it's extremely visceral. And so, and it, the other thing is it's very personal because the thing is, even though we're using words and you like, okay, and oranges, right? And, but you're, and right now you're like conjuring, you're like, your mind is going, I know what an apple looks like and I know what an orange is like and they're different. So, but, but the words I don't, it, now if, if suddenly I'm not saying anything and I'm just broadcasting uh, in my mind, I'm broadcasting that I'm peeling an orange. You know, mm. and the smell of the oil mm. wafting through the air, you know, and you're starting to kind of like salivate a little bit like, uh-huh. man, that's a juicy, really good orange. So uh, in that regard, I, think I it's smelled a much it a little higher. bit. I did. Uh, yeah. I smelled it a little bit. <laughs> I'm serious. I believe you. But it's it's what <clears throat> I'm saying is uh, that's part of our potential or potentiality of in the future is using this technology is okay, but there's techniques, there's processes, there's skills that we have yet to learn that is going to eclipse all of this so-called digital stuff. If someone is doing some a task and then they're wearing an EEG and people are reading their brain activity and then they're, they were yeah. physically doing it and then they st- stop physically doing it and they go and they just mentally think that they're doing it and they just have it happening within them that they're doing it, yeah. same brain yeah. activity. It's crazy. Oh. And so that's also another interesting one. I wonder how much further we can go into that field and prove stuff like that. Also, all this stuff about manifesting, people do this all the time. They go and they go and um, they 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 prepare for their own uh, performances or whatever it may be by mentally visualizing themselves crush it. And then they yeah. and so then they uh, that helps them rock it. There's also um, examples of of like if all these possibility space exists of like you know Robert Stanley's future trajectory or this child that's born into the world their future trajectory all the possibility space exists. Then the I, then the idea is how do I collapse the future in the direction that optimizes my trajectory towards my north star, and that mm-hmm. is. That requires you in the morning and in the night to not be a dopamine monkey and be grabbing this device. (laughs) But it requires you to just chill, be, and literally meditate on the beautiful future that you're building and envision yourself achieving those goals in the North Star. Yeah, the longer and stronger an individual visualizes whatever it is that they want or need, for themselves and others, the greater the likelihood that it will manifest in this reality. And the, the reason is because, as you said, it kind of collapses. We know that the observer, through the slit experiment, we know that the observer affects the outcome. Well, if if you don't observe it, it'll still have an outcome, but it probably won't be the one you want. 
or need. And so I, this goes back to what I was saying before about always expecting someone or something else to do this for you. Well, yeah, they probably will, but you're not going to like it as much as the thing <laughs> as you because we have this thing. And unfortunately, we've been one of the big lies here on this planet is that our imagination is just an illusion. It's basically relegated to a non-essential function when in fact it's it's the opposite. It's one of the greatest uh, uh, abilities or gifts that we were given yeah. as divine beings yeah. is this so-called imagination, ability to imagine or visualize something in a non-physical so that it can then become part of the physical realm. So that, you know, yes. it's... I know it sounds overly simplistic, but it's it's a very me, no well known process. I can I can go a little deeper into this too. Go that ahead. There's even um and I and I still have yet to um to get uh, a better understanding of this, but the general um th one of the schools of thought for the way that things like creativity emerged um, in us yeah. is that we can basically take in our environment and we can we can abstractly reason all of those different future possibilities that exist. And then the better that someone is at that, the more they are of like a creative genius. But if you go too far in the direction of always creatively, abstractly reasoning all the different futures and having difficulty with all that type of stuff, then there's some some people think that that is what can cause people to go off on too much of a deep end on that on that as well and they i i i want to say that it's um robert sapolsky has some work in this field and that um it's i uh it's a genetic evolution i'm not sure if it's one gene two gene um if those were the numbers associated with um what i was just mentioning but that the, yeah. th that that amount of genes was associated with it but that essence of it is such a critical part because in order for you to envision a North Star, you you have to be able to abstractly reason at least these different trajectories. For example, Robert, I would have been a completely different human being if I would have stayed in Sioux Falls, South Dakota. Completely different. Um, and so okay. I, by, my, by making the move to Silicon Valley in California, by making that move, yeah. I changed, I bifurcated my life trajectory. And some people argue that this Alan that's still in Sioux Falls is living in some <laughs> parallel universe right now. Uh, um, yeah. And that one can even potentially in their dream state or even right now, just kind of go between the different parallel universes and go and live in those r realms for a bit or they can come through. It's complicated. It's interesting. It's hypothetical. But so can you abstractly reason what your North Star is? Can you see the different uh, uh, paths to get there and what is most optimal for you? Because it does require that kind of like that that creativity that is also at times can drive people crazy. Robert, some people even feel like, including <laughs> me, feel like we're yeah. swimming in a sea of ideas all the time. Uh. And that yeah. we have to like as quickly as we can just try and grab grab the ideas and and and, and write them down and try and send them to people to execute because we can't execute all of them. But these are the people that are so fucking obsessed with looking at civilization and being like, that's not the fucking best way to do that. We can design it and engineer it better. And here's how to do that. And if you run that process more often in your head as an adult and a child, you will become mm -hmm. a better designer and engineer of a, of our future. Wow. Okay. Um, so you you meet a lot of you know a lot of people in Silicon Valley. Is that what they're working on, or is it just the next gadget? Silicon Valley is fucking insane. This place is so <laughs> insane. Um, yeah, like D define that. I mean, I mean, like, well, I guess. First of all, um, the fact that literally Google is here, Facebook is yeah. here, Apple is oh, wow. here, LinkedIn is here, Twitter is here, Uber is oh, here. All of these like venture capital firms are here. Um, yeah. There's a place called Sand Hill Road they here that just has a, a literally one after the other, all these different venture capital firms. And, you Jeez. know, only... And, you know, just that amount of power of all those companies that we were just talking about, plus all of the funding mm -hmm. for them, it's like, it's just a massive network effect that's happened in this area. And 
um, you know, that's a that's see, here's one of the things we were just talking about today. Actually, we had okay. I was I was interviewing um, one of the guys here on site at at, at Ranch X, um, and um, his name's Newton. And um, he's got he's a very interesting guy working on um, doing things like curing Parkinson's. And the way he's doing that is by inserting a very tiny little grain of rice um, that it's like it's the size of a grain of rice. But what it is, is it's it's a it's a neural prosthetic. And what it does is it goes into the exact targeted area where you have Parkinson's and it goes and it adds a virus that 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 goes away after you're done but it adds a virus that makes the neurons in the area that is targeted it makes them able to be uh, adjusted and impacted by light it's called opto Whoa. it's called optogenetics it's a new field where you can literally modulate neuro- neuronal activity in the brain through light and so he's a, he's shown 900 people they've helped with parkinsons um through this process wow. And so, you know, there's a big variety of different things that's happening um, in the space, uh-huh. right? Um, and all those fields Jeez. that I listed at the beginning, and they're all kind of smashing together, merging. But that's one of the best ways to become a polymath is to go and explore all of those different fields and gain at least some foundational knowledge. Because then what you get is you get the novel connections between disciplines that so many people lack. So how could you mesh together something like neuroscience? science and like the decentralization technologies or how could you mesh something like the the ways that we're processing all of the 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 data that's coming in from autonomous vehicles with their cameras and how could you no. mesh how could you mesh that with the um, with the biometrics that are within our bodies maybe there's a way to like people are doing already which is putting a fucking camera in our mirrors in our uh, in our uh, in our be- in our bedrooms and bathrooms and stuff, which literally will scan my my biometric state in the morning and see, oh, like you must have, you know, your 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 uh, where your hips are is a little bit wider or lo- less, and so it's constant, you know, readout of even pupils is another big one. These wow. these these front facing cameras on these devices have yeah. gotten have are, are are getting they're already doing the facial scans to unlock the phone. Right. Well, you. Can do this is crazy, Robert. You can literally see the you can see pulsations. You can see people's heart rate by the front facing camera on phones. Because you can what? see you can see the little tiny um micro uh microvasculature, the little, oh, the little okay. pul- pulse the little pulsations. Yeah, 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 and yeah, yeah. with that type of all the sensors in these devices to be able to read out all these things. So this is what all these people here are. But a lot of people here. So this was sorry, just quick, just quick finishing <laughs> that that this that this, you know, the guy that we were talking to, Newton, that the idea is before him, a person came on to talk about this global fund for women and women's equality around the planet and how there are still so many countries around the world where women are treated like property, where women are impregnated right. um, against their will, where women Jeez. are uneducated, that they're uneducated, um, uh, and because of that, they have they have a limited degrees of freedom with where they want to go into yeah. the world. And so it's just interesting dichotomizing those two things, where one of them is something strategically around the world, trying to go and help people and increase their degrees of freedom, make women more empowered around the world, to pursuing their North Stars. And the other one is like pretty much for you know curing parkinson's but also for you know people that can really afford something that's probably going to cost half a million dollars or maybe more right mm-hmm. so so yeah so here's this dichotomy and I'll, i think I'll, <laughs> people really do feel like in silicon valley a lot of people are are solving um problems either of the hyper wealthy or that are so micro fractionally irrelevant in like you don't need a 15th uh uh company that does intercompany communication platform you know what i mean yeah. you don't need that go and solve yeah, a real redundant. world problem yeah and so that's one of the other philosophies around here there's also a lot of spirituality that's kicking in from the counterculture days that was still here and that that's yeah there's an undercurrent of that i remember jobs had this thing about uh well he did have some of that going on but he's not the only thing i just figured there's a lot of different people there that are working on different projects and 
some of it though that is kind of freaky with the singularity and the transhumanist movement um those those folks i that kind of seems like a dead end to me or at least not a place that i would want to go <laughs> and be part of at some point i just uh, mm, I like the the natural systems much better. Connect, with, reconnect with the cosmos as opposed to this construct. You know, the digital realm. Uh, it's it's virtually real, sure enough. But um, I don't know. It's, it's just strange times that we're in here. I I kind of feel like this is a repeat of Atlantis in a lot of ways. And and we uh, talk uh, about that so much. We started our you do? yeah. We started our show. We did a we did a show on identifying and correcting perverse incentives, and we started that panel. We did an event around that topic. We talked a lot about self dealing and embedded growth obligations and all these other types of things. But we I started the show by giving a quick bit on there have been so many previously collapsed civilizations. There's no guarantee yeah. that us kindergartners, third graders playing with these godlike technologies is going to end up in the singularity, you know. So, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's I know it sounds good. It's a great sales job for some people are sounds falling good. for it. It's a great sales it is, pitch. <laughs> It is. It is. Like, don't you want to be part of yeah, that? Yeah, yeah. Just, just but jam this I, into again, your I head. Think a lot of we'll them, be good. Yeah. Uh, or download your consciousness. <laughs> yeah, into a device. No, thank you. Um, it, uh, some people will go for it though, because again, I think that a lot of this is based on fear, or at least a lack of love. It, 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 that's again, this is the thing about the Ami books. It's all about it, you know balancing out your love quotient with the science. And if the science gets too much, then the whole thing just falls. It's like an avalanche. It's just going it's, to, it's, it can't sustain itself. It's just a little t- uh, unbalanced and it's just going to come down. So That's I, a huge I don't know. takeaway from our conversation, Robert. I'm so happy that yeah. you brought me into the, the nomenclature. Love quotient. Constantly tap into our own love quotient as well as the love quotient of people around us by just checking in, yep. by tapping in, in the mornings yeah. and evenings with our families, all this type of stuff. I love that. It's a great. Yeah, thing. yeah. And in, in person is better, unfortunately. <laughs> it's, making, it's it's a lot more uh, difficult these days because everybody's so uh, connected to their devices. Robert, can I make yeah. a quick? I want to make yeah, a go ahead. plug. Yeah, yeah. Um, we're wrapping up in two minutes. So, what do you want? You, um, what's your final word? The final um, thoughts are: everyone, um, I'm extremely grateful for Robert for hosting us um, on his show. Thank you very much for tuning in. I also would love to um, thank you all for that watched also on on video across our platforms as well. Huge thank you um, for those that are interested in watching some of these thought provoking interviews we have with leaders. You can find it simulation series dot com or across youtube and facebook um twitter instagram etc you can find us a uh, simulation series um and also just everyone have more conversations with your friends your families coworkers, people online on social media about these pressing topics that we talked about go and share more about this idea of the love quotient around the world and embody it more ourselves talk about the ultimate nature of reality more we need to do that more often as a planet and just the importance of supporting people like robert if you like his program support robert help him continue building this program help bill as well continue doing his radio program help simulation do our program support these artists these entrepreneurs these leaders in your communities and let's build the future together that's that's a wrap from me thank you very much yeah excellent thank you alan for being a guest and for being and all the great work that you and your colleagues are doing over there Thanks, Robert. all right ladies and gentlemen that concludes another episode of the unicus radio hour uh as always i i do appreciate your listenership it's always a privilege and a pleasure please be good to yourselves and others and until next time may the force be with you Alan, the um, you you do not have a go, uh, what do you ever call it a, a screen over your microphone. So when you get close and you pop your peas, oh, okay, it, it it's very it's it's oh, <laughs> I can hear we can hear you. That's a good point. Yeah, what if I can put a cloth of any sort, you, could, you got a sock. <laughs> put a sock on it. <laughs> <laughs> a sock will work. Got a sock, brother. Uh, yeah, really? Have you done that, Bill? Uh, it has to be not a regular wool sock, but like um, like a black, like a oh, that's a wool sock already. Like a nylon, you know, like the. the do, you, the, do you have a dress shirt for dress exact, shoes? Exact. Alan, what? Alan, that 
<laughs> it's the funniest okay. shit ever. It's like a condom. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Never mind. Oh. Never mind. <laughs> I'm putting this. I'm okay. putting this at the end of our uh, video on yeah. our channel. Thank God you're, that's, you cut that on video, man. Oh my God, <laughs> that's gonna go viral.